Okay, welcome back. So, we're going to see what we got here. Crawl space scenario. System is apparently short cycling in a way. So, I'm just trying to see what's happening. See if we got any faults. Turn my light off. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. All right, so let's see what that's about. Six flashes. I don't like rental properties. He's always just not very, not very good. All right, so this is a York with a six flash code. Got to open this in order to get it, so it's going to reset at the same time. It's going to, yeah. yeah. Six flashes. Let's see here. So six is going to be six flashes, repeated three red, vent intake termination problem. I'm guessing that's what that means. Repeated three red. So maybe it says. We've had a vent intake termination problem three times. Thinking that's what that means. I'm going to do here, it says here, okay, for fault code retrieval will work only if there is no, no active thermostat signals. Okay, to achieve fault codes, push and release error button on the control board. LED will flash. So I'm going to push and release error button on the board. Get some power. Push. Ay, ay, ay. Hold on. I don't want it to go back in there, so I'm just going to go ahead and take this white off. White wire. Off of the uh, board. That one I'm not going to call for heat. Bull crap. Take the W right off like such. Okay. I'd like to see what this fault hood is. So we're going to push and release. Let's see what we get. There's six. All it's giving me is a six fault. Oh, wait. Two, three, four. Six, so that's six, and then we're gonna do one, two, three. Okay. So it was a three. So let's go ahead and fire it up. Get that thing back in there. We got a three, which was the um Three was going to be a blue pipe issue. So, three red vent intake or termination problem. Okay. So, let's go ahead and put this door back on. Let it fire up. So, it's a 90% furnace, so it's likely going to be some sort of a Flue pipe issue, or the flue pipe seems to be pitching back pretty well. Look at this bull crap condensation. I hate stuff like this so bad. You don't even want to mess with it. So they're literally just letting it flow down into the crawl space. And if this ever creates high CO, just let it fire up, see what happens. If it even wants to do that and see something. Well, there's three. So we got another three fault. Okay, so for whatever reason, the audio stopped recording on my camera. So I'm just going to go ahead and voice over um, these, uh, what I'm doing here. So I'm just checking 24 volts across the pressure switch. So I'm just going to go ahead and find a really good ground. 
uh, to put one side of the meter on and I'm referencing uh, 24 volts to ground here so one side of the pressure switch I'm checking one side here the voltage coming in and we've got 27 volts all right so I'm just checking on the other pressure switch here and we can see that also is showing actually that's 0 0.02 volts so you can see it's not making it through that pressure switch so what I went ahead and did is started tapping on that pressure switch to try to see if I can actually uh, get that contact to be made and as you can see it's still not it wasn't showing any voltage so I went ahead and removed the um, hose here the pressure switch hose from the inducer and I usually like to just inspect that for cracks any sort of damage sometimes mice can chew on that thing put holes in it and uh, just blow it out manually blow it out make sure there's nothing in there you also want to clean out the port as well that the hose um, plugs onto on the inducer itself sometimes that port can get backed up especially in these dirty crawl spaces so I went ahead and uh, made sure that was clear as well still to no avail it still didn't start up what I had to do was wind up um, pulling a negative pressure on that switch on the actual so I just pulled the hose off and kind of just sucked on it like a straw and it pulled the negative pressure just lightly you don't want to pull in too hard that could basically damage the pressure switch but just lightly to hear a little click and once I did that it started making the pressure switch start to make contact properly and I was uh, then it, it completed the circuit and the system fired up so uh, basically the pressure switch is just more than likely uh, the contacts in there were starting to fail because um, basically the inducer port was clean the hose and everything was in good condition no uh, blockages but once I basically manually uh, made the pressure switch everything looked everything fired up fine okay so I just want to take a quick second to talk about the CRM I use for my personal business and that's Jobber so the main thing I love about Jobber is just the interface it's basically the most streamlined user-friendly interface that I've used out of all the CRMs I've used over my career it's super streamlined super intuitive there's a super powerful marketing suite built into the app that you can actually um, use to integrate your Google reviews into uh, Jobber that way you can actually view the reviews respond to different customers that left reviews and actually interact with your client base another thing I thought was really cool just on a simpler aspect is just the automated responses or automated reminders to customers and this just uh, really saves from just the hassle of having to chase customers down for payment you can pretty much pre-specify uh, the frequency of the follow-up invoices that are sent out after the invoices do and it's just really comforting to know jobbers actually working in the background to get you paid even when you might forget or you know things fall through the cracks from just you know being so busy wearing multiple hats so that's a pretty powerful feature as well so yeah in a nutshell jobber is pretty much like the glue to your company to help to make everything cohesive and just run and uh, run as smoothly and efficiently as possible so check out the uh, link in the description below for a free trial and uh, like I said if you use that link you get 20% off let me know what you think in the comments below thanks for watching click the link in the comments to get your free trial of jobber today all right, so I went ahead and plumbed the uh, manometer here in to our, basically our inducer pressure switch. Sorry for that. Put all this foolishness, water spewing out of there now. So we see we've got inches of water, minus two inches of water column, so we've got a good pull. It fire oh yeah it's firing up again that pressure switch is just intermittently failing it might have had some water in it but it could just be in, just a failing pressure switch okay but we we're gonna have to address this foolishness all these open ports here but yeah it looks to me a pressure switch issue for me and try out the remedy rectify these uh, hoses so what I'm gonna do pull up the York manual I'm just gonna go ahead and reconfigure these hoses as you can see they didn't even try to get this right um, our pressure switch hose should be going to the lower side of the uh, heat exchanger cover so the upper pressure switch hose right now it's at the upper side so this ho from this pressure switch here shouldn't be here it should be down there okay so what I'm gonna do 
Take that pressure through toes like such. Okay, bring it back down through around here. There's a little cap. Let me see if I can get this. There's a little yellow cap on it. So I'm just gonna pull this cap off. There it is, caps off. Now put this pressure switch hose on there like such. There you go. You can see it there. All right. Pressure switch hose on. Now, oops, hold on. I'm gonna grab that cap. And we're just gonna go ahead and put that cap here where the old hose was. Okay, now what else here? This is all so simple, you just read the manual. All right, now we've got this hose from down here should go up to this collar. So right now, we got one side blocked off. I'm not even sure how to get that green plug out of there, but it's coming out of this plug, so I, I might be able to make it work. So instead of it draining down out of here, like an insanity and going down into the crawl space it was no I don't even think this was ever plumbed on here because this hose won't even fit on here never it's not even it was never wide enough so unless they had it inside of there but either way that comes up out of there and we're just gonna go ahead and I'm hoping this is we're just gonna we're just gonna go ahead and uh, come up through here and then I might be able to get that green plug out of there. I don't know. Either way, it's coming out of this side, so I might just let's see if we can just hook it onto that side. And then this big hose here that was just sitting inside of the cabinet, we're going to literally dump that down through here. Here we go. Okay. Ay ay ay. That had a kink in it too. See there. Pretty well kinked. So. Ay ay ay. I'm gonna have to get a, some sort of coupling or something. I don't know. We'll figure that out. But that's gonna have to somehow connect to that. Looks like they cut everything all up on me, so we might have to come back with proper hoses. And I don't think I've got anything in the van. I can check. Let's see if we can keep going here. Um, so those two, that pressure switch hose is still good. I think that's fine. That'll be good once we get those two rectified. All right. Looks good. Let me get this hose taken care of and we'll be right back. All right. So we got everything situated. Factory installed. Got that hooked up down here. Going straight to your condensate. Pumps here. Okay. Running straight back into there. Uh... Looking good to me. And this hose here is going up into the blue pipe. So I think we should be good. Headlights dying here. So that concludes it. That's perfect timing. Um, like I said, the pressure switch probably got probably been compromised just due to improper drainage and it might have just caused water to get up in there and screw with those contacts but all right that's pretty much it gang let me get out of this crawl space this is just uh this should this is a pretty quick one let me know what you think in the comments below thanks for watching Everything's looking pretty good still. Yep, firing up. Beautiful.
it's always good to keep, you know, if you ever come across Goodman systems that have been installed in any orientation and these hoses have just been left stranded in the attic, it's good to keep these kind of hoses on deck because they come in handy for these kind of um, situations. So, cool. That's it, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching.